Good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Well, it's good to be back along with what appears to be the return of spring. And as things green up, weeds are taking off. That's why SUNUP's Kathy Shelton is here with a look at dealing with those weeds in a no-till operation. Here on SUNUP, we've talked a lot about the benefits of a no-till operation and how to get one started and the equipment you should use. But one thing we haven't touched on just yet is how to control the weeds in those operations. And here to help us out with that today is weed extension specialist Joe Armstrong. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. So why are weeds such a big concern in no-till? Well, in no-till production systems, obviously we're eliminating our mechanical weed control uh, options there. So now we're relying uh, primarily on chemical weed control and cultural weed control methods. So cultural weed control methods would be things like uh, crop rotation, row spacing, uh, plant population or, or planting date in some situations. So a lot of these weeds can be controlled with herbicides, but how do the growers pick which herbicide to use? Well, certainly crop rotation is the biggest uh, piece of the pie in, in your no-till production system. So you have to choose herbicides that will control weeds that you're fighting in each particular crop but then avoid any uh, herbicide carryover problems with those herbicides so you don't uh, have injury in subsequent, uh, subsequent crops in that rotation. Right, well now, will a lot of these weeds be resistant to some of those herbicides? Well, th that's the big issue that's coming in, in no-till production. Um, here in Oklahoma, we, we don't have a lot of these herbicide resistant problems that they have in other parts of the U.S. Um, in the Corn Belt and in the southeastern part of the United States where they use a lot of uh, glyphosate resistant corn, soybeans, and cotton. Uh, They've relied basically on that one herbicide for many years now, and they've selected for some of those herbicide-resistant weeds. And those can quickly become the biggest problem in a field um, just because of their aggressive nature. But here in Oklahoma, uh, we're kind of behind a little bit in some of that adoption, so uh, we haven't had those resistance issues just yet, but now we are starting to run into some of those right, problems. Right, right. Um, so what are the, some of the weeds that we can expect to see? Well, uh, small seeded weeds are going to be the biggest problem in no-till. So things like the pigweed species, water hemp, palmer amaranth, um, grass weeds, usually they're smaller seeded as well, can become a bigger problem. Probably the biggest uh, pr weed problem in no-till production nationwide is mare's tail or horseweed. And you have some of that here with us this morning. Yeah, we, we've uh, collected about 20 samples last fall from around the state mm -hmm. in different no-till systems. Again, soybean, cotton, uh, corn. And we've been screening those here in the greenhouse to, uh, for resistance to two different herbicides, glyphosate or, or Roundup, and then a, um, an ALS inhibitor product, one called First Rate. Uh, you might also use a, an ALS product in wheat called Finesse or Amber, some of those products. What do you guys hope to get from this study that you're doing right here? Well, driving around the state when we were collecting these samples, we found a lot of fields that had um, mare's tail scattered throughout. And so, um, Based on what I've seen in other parts of the United States, well, my first concern was resistance. Mm -hmm. um, however, mare's tail is, is a kind of tricky weed. Once it gets a little bit of height to it, um, it's going to be very difficult to control with, with any herbicide. So really, when they're this size here is, is the best time to control them. However, if they are resistant, even if you spray them when they're in this rosette uh, growth stage here, very small, if they're resistant, you're not going to control them then either. Okay, so that's when you go back to the importance of crop rotation. And what else do you need to focus on besides crop rotation? Well, I, I think crop rotation is probably the biggest thing because that allows you to use uh, different herbicides from different herbicide modes of action, uh, include a little diversity in that weed control program. Um, but there are other things. You know, we talked about um, narrow row spacing. Uh, many guys that, that produce soybeans in no-till uh, systems often drill them in, in seven and a half inch rows or narrow rows. And that helps provide an earlier canopy cover, which will help uh, reduce the dependency on herbicides, uh, at least later on in the growing season. Is this something that growers need to consider early? I mean, stay on top of it? And I mean, what time of the year should they really be focusing on this weed control? Yeah, uh, in no-till, weed control becomes a year-round concern. Um, of course, in-crop is important, but mare's tail is one of those weeds that, that can germinate almost year-round, 10 or 11 months of the year. So uh, you don't want to wait until you're right up to your planting time in the spring, maybe with soybeans or, or uh, grain sorghum in a no-till situation. You want to control this maybe in the fall and help knock back some of those populations. Um, look at early spring applications to help, help keep mare's tail in, in check. Otherwise, you're going to get to planting and you're going to have large plants that will be very tough to control. So something you really just need to stay on top of. Yes, year-round. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Thank Jeff. Thank you, Debbie.